Welcome back to Truly Terrified, Paranormal vs. Physics, where we talk about some really weird stuff, and Joe, the scientist, explains how it's not possible, or maybe it is. I'm Lynn, and... I'm Joe. Last week, or last episode, we were talking about quantum immortality. Actually, Joe was talking about quantum immortality because I am not qualified to even speak of such things. So we're going to go on and talk about that some more today, and hopefully I'll be able to ask some questions. So quantum immortality is you, your consciousness or your ability to observe persists based on quantum mechanical principles. There's maybe a possibly a stronger version of that concept or something related to it. If you can imagine, if there's a bunch of different possible universes Let's say, disregarding quantum mechanics, there's a bunch of different possible universes. Uh, there's just like a set of a, a billion universes. And some of them are just really hot. Like, they're burning up. They, oh, really? Literally hot? Like, everything is essentially one giant star. Okay. There obviously aren't any people in that universe. So, you're not on... You're not in those universes. Of course you're not. The fact that you exist means you're not in one of those universes. And maybe some of them are t too cold. Maybe some of them are just, there's so much stuff you, you couldn't evolve. And if it was the case that almost all of the universes were like that, um, but there was just one that it was possible for you to exist, if you were observing yourself or anything at all, you're going to be on that one. Not the two hot ones, not the two cold ones. So um, I think it's the weak anthropic principle is uh, that uh, uh, the fact that we observe means that uh, that a universe does exist. And strong means the fact that we observe means we make it exist. Mm. So it kind of gets muddied, though, with quantum mechanics. If you kind of conceive of those two concepts together, quantum mechanics, many worlds interpretation of quantum mechanics says because you're observing, you are sort of making your own universe as you observe it. So you're, you are looking out and you're seeing stuff in the universe. There are other possible different universes, quote unquote, but the one you're seeing is because you're looking out at it. And so you have this huge universe with lots of stuff branching off and constantly evolving in different ways. The ones which evolved so that it just never happened that a person that people ever evolved, you wouldn't be on those ones. And the, the universes where just you happen to not have been conceived or whatever, you're not going to be on those ones. So any extension of uh, quantum mechanics or any physics at all, if there's a larger universe of, with physics that are expanded, so they like, you know, you can do other things or things can evolve in other ways. That's also a superposition. So it's evolving in different possible ways you're not going to see the ones that are evolving in ways that are hostile to your existence. Okay. And this is all, of course, taking, saying you're quantum immortal, so you, so any universe where you would just instantly die, you won't see that one, ever. You'll only see the one that where you live. So if you're quantum immortal and there's a larger physics, then you're only going to see the one that's stable, that isn't, crazy where you're instantly dying every second or whatever and that's interesting because although quantum immortality is not like something lots of people uh think is a thing really i mean they don't believe that it's actually it's kind of like a fringe it's kind of fringe thing. i mean i i think maybe there are statistics on that but i can't re really remember i don't personally believe in it exactly as it as um it's put forth but um but if it is, if you take that it's true, then it, 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 there's a possibility that the universe itself, the physics of the universe, actually are much larger than you can observe. You just literally cannot observe the other, what's actually mm -hmm. happening. And there's an even larger model that is essentially that taken to the extreme, where every possible physics... So you can think of it like the physics themselves are in superposition. So like, for instance, you heat up the electron mm -hmm. generator and the electron just in one universe phases right through the side of the electron and then explodes and destroys the entire universe. Uh, or one where it just stops and everything stops and time stops and, you know, 
those universes you won't see. So you'll only you're only going to see the ones where the universe behaves how you think it's going to behave in a classical way. If all you can see is the classical universe, that means the universe you think you see right mm -hmm. now, then you're not going to see the exotic ones. If those exotic ones are possible, um, the extreme version again is every physics is happening, but there's just a really, really tiny number of them which could possibly support you. And of those ones uh, that you could exist for seconds or longer, there's a tiny proportion of those where you you last for as long as you have. And because if you consider like you you can't just like find a different version of yourself or interact with somebody who's obviously has knowledge from the multiverse or whatever, that means that other phenomena in what you think are the universe is the universe also in are encoding the universe as you think the universe actually is. So like you don't have privileged information from outside what the universe appears to be. And so I can't gain information by like talking to you. <laughs> Everything looks like it really is this classical universe. And so like I there's nothing I could do to stand, to find if oh yeah that electron exploded and destroyed the entire universe. The information that encodes the Class, a classical universe, only classical information is allowed in that universe, like by definition. And so you just can't see what's happening. So it's really interesting. I don't know if I, de I, I even feel that that kind of universe is the true one. Um, and I definitely don't, it doesn't get to the level of believing. But if you accept quantum immortality, that's the kind of stuff you're contending with. Like really crazy stuff. That is, uh, uh, that is painful to my brain. Yeah, scary. I Terrifying. do have some questions about it. Okay, go ahead. We're going to take a break and then we'll be right back. First thing, I have to say this before it goes out of my mind because okay. it's like smoke. It's such a, just a go such for a it. ethereal thought. So when you were talking about the person walking down the path and then there's other paths and then you from your perspective go off on this one but there's other yous that go off on mm -hmm. other ones what if if the many worlds interpretation and in quantum immortality is true that in actuality we're all the same thing and we're each just a different perspective of the same thing like panpsychism is that what that's called like uh, everything well i guess one variant of it a single consciousness that's just spread throughout everything and i I think so like from what I was just talking about quantum physics that the person observing their universe is kind of kind of defining that universe um the classical universe because although the universe is actually a lot of stuff and it's like involves that classical universe almost everyone else is immediately branching off to different variant universes so uh, like the universe where you are like quantum immortal and you live for 20,000 years or whatever, the people know you're quantum immortal because you're 20,000 years old and you're the only one who is quantum immortal because of those weird properties. Mm -hmm. Like that is part of the fundamental understanding of the idea behind the many worlds interpretation is that there is kind of a unification of everything. Many weeks ago, we were talking about i can't remember and uh i brought up the prima materia mm -hmm. so the fundamental thing fundamental substance whatever and from a kind of certain perspective that's sort of what universe stuff is universe stuff is like it just takes every form mm -hmm. if you just let it evolve you also are the form it takes your perspective is the form it takes you know the information right. is the form it takes and it will just continue. So in a sense, so like I don't believe, necessarily believe or even feel quantum immortality is true, but I definitely believe that there is a continuity of the information in consciousness, the fundamental perspective of consciousness, the metaphysical consciousness. But the, the problem is the information might change. So like who you believe you are, that might not persist even in quantum immortality. Like what you think is going on might not mm -hmm. persist. 
it might you might completely shift over to you're talking about if you if you were to die or something mm -hmm. okay here's the classical universe you quote unquote die in your classical universe you have not died like from the many worlds perspective you are this huge amorphous flowing substance that it doesn't even make any sense to say you've quote unquote died all it would take is for your perspective to change to just skew a little bit in mm -hmm. that huge all expanded version of of reality and now what's death you know so another thing that came to me when you were talking about um and when you maybe you simplified it for me i don't know but the the particles being shot uh -huh. towards the detectors detectors that's almost literally what we're doing by looking with this new telescope into the vastness of the universe mm -hmm. are we creating the universe as we look so in a sense yes so the light coming from distant sources should also be in superposition there's what's called quantum decoherence so as things are interacting they're kind of sharing information and when we interact with those things we gain information about a third thing mm -hmm. so it's it's not quite a like completely unconstrained superposition but a galaxy could potentially be in a completely different spot or something i mean no one really understands how it the many worlds interpretation universe could actually be um, but one possibility is huge scale differences are possible mm -hmm. like you look out and that is you looking out at essentially the detector right after the universe perform the experiment right so one of the problems that's really like i think a fundamental problem is the problem of universe spec specificness which is why why is the universe this specific like there's not like a pattern where every like 20 uh, thousand light years away there's a different version of our solar system that's slightly different and then it's like everything is pa you know it's like there's a universe with the milky way here and here's some stuff that's like has this particular configuration like 10 to the negative 20 seconds after the big bang the universe was in this configuration and and it's very specific and that's all of existence why is it exactly like that not something else one possible explanation how so you know solution to that problem is well the universe is just in a superposition of it itself every different possible big bang mm -hmm. occurred every different possible um configuration is out there still you're just seeing this little slice of it so i think it would be really hard to be a scientist working on a project or research that's about our classical universe and believing in you know other things or conversely to be trying to actually probably not as difficult to be trying to research or examine or come up with theories about the many worlds or mm -hmm. quantum immortality like theorists versus right it just um, experiment it just seems like that would be really hard to if you if you weren't one if you were one and you were trying to work in the other field it would just be really hard i think the best kind of theorist and experimentalist just retains an open mind i mean if you get bogged down like this is how the universe really is you might miss how it actually is mm -hmm. and so you have to kind of say it might be like this it might be like this there's a list of different possibilities i might be completely wrong that's why i really have a hard time when theorists or whoever physicists or whoever um doesn't accept the possibility that we don't live in a physicalist universe that means like for instance a mind only universe like there are multiple consciousnesses constructing the universe or simulated by some exotic thing or whatever mm -hmm. um you fundamentally cannot disprove that so like you might one day wake up oh look there's a portal to another dimension and it's the mind dimension oh look there are pure concepts floating around to me in which case you're pretty sure that you're living in an idealist universe okay um, so this flies in the face of the stuff we talked about with rook last week no it was the week before when you and i talked about the secret 
Oh, yeah. So we both kind of were like, you know, there's a really realistic reason why this works. And uh -huh. It's not something yeah. woo. But maybe it is something mm -hmm. woo. Maybe there really is some kind of interaction between, you know, another world. Maybe somebody really can just look down and have their sock turn blue. Maybe they can. Yeah, so it's interesting because I don't know if it's really possible, but it's conceivably possible that, like, there could be an interact in quantum mechanics, many world interpretation, whatever. Um, there could be you interacting with a different universe. I mean, you're always interacting mm -hmm. with every other universe, but your your slice of reality that you're encoding information in shifts slightly mm -hmm. and it changes something like that. I mean, yeah. that's why I always bring it up because it is a kind of realistic almost quasi sort of maybe accepted possible, possible explanation explanation i mean it's a lot more credible than saying like ghosts okay but in. wait a minute maybe ghosts is just our yeah. kind of childish way of putting a label on something because we don't understand yeah it. exactly just like those so, old time bible people saying if you eat pork it's a sin it was an abomination it's because there's there's a reason to bugs it. in it so um yeah but I, so like what i'm saying is there like one explanation is the super exotic thing like ghosts there's there uh, no one even has like a mechanism how a ghost would exist how it would interact with anything you know but here's something that kind of might be maybe sort of correct i mean it's an actual avenue to Oh, no, really, there could be something that's kind of ethereal and comes and interacts and changes your socks out. Because you can't see it, because that's not how quantum mechanics works, well, but, or many so worlds interpretation. Here we are on our little path, or the things are coming at us, and we're observing what is going on, mm -hmm. and this is our perspective. But couldn't there be a glitch? Or where, because of some collision earlier you are getting glimpses of other um receptors or detectors seeing stuff coming in and you're just getting glimpses of it because yeah you're so not one it. of the really strangest things the information theoretic kind of many minds variant interpretation that i prefer quantum mechanics says that uh you, your universe is just because you're encoding information that's part of that universe and but why why that particular type of information why that particular type of universe mm -hmm. but it's kind of a self-perpetuating thing the brain that's within this universe the classical universe that it's in that it can only encode that kind of information mm -hmm. on is seeing itself interact with the classical universe in order to change to update its state and, and evolve in the, that universe. So it's the fact that the information on that brain, it's encoding its own existence, essentially. Your brain, it is encoding a type of information that's defining the universe it thinks it's getting the, uni the information from. Why that particular kind of information? Why that particular subset of the universe? Like, why don't I have a perception of like a superposition of exactly two of me mm -hmm. where I can walk around right. and do two things simultaneously. Right. And even in your dreams, which is where you would think that if there was going to be any kind of a, a more looser reality, mm -hmm. you don't really, you know, it's very rare to think that you're somebody different. You mm -hmm. might dream of different people, but you don't dream of yourself as really being a different person. You're still you. So I think it is really pretty interesting and it is kind of hard to wrap your brain around. So it is pos definitely possible to get an intuition in the same sense you can get an intuition about what four dimensions looks like. You can't imagine it really, but you can kind of sort of simulate imagining it. And so like, for instance, one trick is, oh, well, okay, I can't see what's around that corner. So what's around that corner? A superposition of all the things that are around that corner consistent with my memory. If there's a bump, 
the superposition also includes someone coming in the back door you know yeah it's pretty crazy but i think that's one of the least crazier exotic models of reality i mean like an idealist universe is crazy compared to that well we will have to and talk about also, that another time and also there's nothing stopping like you from having a superposition of idealist universes a uh, quantum idealist universe where you aren't in a physicalist universe your mind in an idealist universe but you are in a superposition of other variant minds of you oh my god joey you know the really interesting thing is it doesn't none of this matters you still live your life you still it's like the quantum immortality thing okay so you're quantum immortal Twenty thousand years from now what are you going to be doing you're not going to care that you're quantum immortal you're, you're probably just gonna not be, gonna know you're just gonna be living your life one interesting thing though is if you're quantum immortal it just so happens that this is probably the best most obvious obvious time for you to be born because in the next hundred years or so life extension technologies will make it more likely that you'll live as long as you want so it does seem kind of on the nose you know if you're a believer in that you're born now because otherwise it would be such a low probability that you were would continue to exist that you couldn't have been born in any other time you have to be born now so that you can get the life extension technology to avoid those super ultra low probability universes so again that does require retro causality so i think there was more i wanted to say but that was the gist of it it's hard it's a hard concept to comprehend to understand basic quantum immortality is a person possibly could be immortal and not die because of quantum physics but it's not really well accepted so as it shouldn't be it, i mean it's an interesting idea but it's not a very it doesn't Good. it doesn't really resonate with me as being you know like like oh that explains so much it doesn't really to me yeah, it seems like a, a clunky way to try and explain something though i do have to say the many worlds interpretation which is variants of that as well are, are my preferred interpretation of quantum physics so that is really elegant that's the most elegant as far as i'm concerned of all of the interpretations but the extension that you have to observe the next instant of the universe and so therefore you will observe it and you can't not you can't stop being an observer i don't know i think that requires too many assumptions okay so i don't believe in it i don't believe it you should not feel it's true but hold your belief until it's either disconfirmed or confirmed okay again my three stages of belief feeling believing knowing feeling is you just have this sense that something is true not true believing is you don't know it's not true but you you're fairly confident you this is what you actually believe and knowing is you know something is not true or true like for instance i feel like uh there are hmm, <laughs> I feel like the uh, the UFO stuff is actually extraterrestrials but I don't I don't believe or disbelieve it but I, I believe that Bigfoot has there's no such thing as Bigfoot but I don't know or not know it and I'm I know hmm, knowing is the hard one mm -hmm. oh I know that what I ate for breakfast <laughs> okay you know what I mean yeah thanks for that description of quantum immortality that was uh, almost bordering on anxiety producing thank you thank you listeners for coming along our contact information is in the show notes and as always if you have a story you want to tell send it to us please share subscribe and leave a review wherever you get your podcasts thanks for listening and never be so terrified you can't run